In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being by Him, and apart from Him, nothing came into being that has come into being. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. John 1, 1 through 4. This school year has been different for everyone, yet the light of Christ has shown in each student, teacher, and principal this year. Our fourth through sixth graders have worked hard to put together their Christmas program this year. Even though it is not how we normally do the program, the kids found joy in creating this program for you. Even though they sang with their masks on, they sang the joy and gladness of the Christmas season. We now present to you SME's fourth through sixth grade Christmas program, The Stories of the Savior. We are so very pleased that you have chosen to join us for this presentation, Stories of the Savior, our Christmas program this year. My colleague and I have been discussing the birth of Jesus, and we have decided that it doesn't really start in the New Testament. Quite right. You see, it actually started in the beginning. So that is where our presentation is going to begin, at the beginning. Yes, at creation to be exact. You may be wondering, what does the birth of Jesus have to do with creation? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning of God. All things came into being by Him, and apart from Him nothing came into being that has come into being. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. John chapter 4, verses 1-4 through four. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we behold His glory, glory as the only begotten from the Father full of grace and truth. John chapter 1 verse 14. Children, go where I send thee. How shall I send thee? Oh, I'm going to send thee three by three. Three for Mary, wise men, two for Mary. Joseph, one for Lily. Baby, born, born, born in Bethlehem. Children, go where I send thee. created on the sixth grade of creation. Yes, of course, Adam and Eve. Then the Lord God formed man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. Genesis chapter two, verse seven. And the Lord God fashioned into a woman the rib which he had taken from the man and brought her to the man. Genesis chapter two, verse 22. You may ask, why are, we, why are we bringing them up in the Christmas pre presentation? Yes, why are you bringing them up? Well, it all, well, it all started with them. They are the first joy of the Savior. When the woman saw a tree was good for food, it was a delight to the eyes. And the tree was desirable to make one wise. She took from its fruit and ate. She gave also to her husband with her, and he ate. Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God. The Lord God called out to the man and said, Where are you? The man said in reply, I am I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid, so I hid. And the man then the Lord God said to the man, Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? Then he said in reply, The the woman of whom you gave to be with me 
gave me from the tree, and I ate. Then the God, Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said in reply, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. Genesis chapter 3, verse 8 through 13. Sounds like the blame game to me. Yes, but by their disobedience, the human race now needs their savior. That is why we were going to do this presentation today. Our presentation is called Stories of the Savior. It is about different people in the Bible and their stories of the Savior. Exactly. I have this chart that will help us along the way. Fancy. I know. So who's next? The one and only Noah. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man on earth was great and every intent in his heart was evil continuously. And so the Lord was sorry that he had made man on earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So he said, I shall blot out man who I have created, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found a favor in the eyes of the Lord. Genesis chapter 6 verses 5 through 8. For the coming of the Son of Man will be just like the days of Noah, for as in those days which were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, they were marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and they did not understand until the flood came and took them all away. So shall the coming of the man, so, so, so shall the coming of the son of man be. Matthew chapter 24, verses 37 to 39. So many years ago in Bethlehem, a baby came like, like a violet in the snow. He was wrinkled in red and he cried just the same as you and I. And as she held her son, Christ also died for sins once for all, the just for the unjust, in order that he m might bring us to God, having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also went and made proclamation to the spirits now in prison, who once were disobedient, when the patience of God kept waiting in the days of Noah during the construction of the ark, 
in which a few, that is eight persons, were brought safely through the water. And corresponding to that, baptism now saves you, not the removal of dirt from the flesh, but an appeal to God for, for good conscience through the res- resurrection of Jesus Christ. Peter chapter 3, verses 18 through 21. Now we are going to send it over to Brendan Braven in our other new studio. Merry, Merry Christmas! Hello, Pixar fans. Brendan and I are so excited to share the stories of our Savior with you. Let's continue. Yes, let's continue. So, Adam and Eve have a story, and so does Noah. Who else? Let's start off with Adam. Abraham. Even though he isn't a part of the Christmas story, he is a part of God's plan and story. I love this song that we are about to hear. The King of Glory comes to the nation, rejoices, open. because he loved and obeyed my voice. Genesis chapter 22, verse 18. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Amber, Amber, Abraham's offspring. Here's according to the promise. Galatians chapter 3, verse 29. The book of genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of, son of Abraham. Matthew chapter 1, verse 1. Jesus came from the bloodline of Abraham. So Abraham was Jesus' great, 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 really great grandpa. I guess you can say it like that. But they also said that Jesus came from David. Should we go on to him next? He raised up to David to be their king, considering whom he also testified and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my heart who will do my will. From the offspring of this man, according to the promise, God brought to Israel a Savior, Jesus. Acts chapter 13, verse 22 through 23. This came from the line of David. So that leads up to the actual birth of Jesus.
We skipped a lot of people in the Bible who have stories that lead up to the birth of Jesus. Yes, but if we showed every one of them, we may be still be presenting them until Jesus came the second time. That makes sense. I would probably get hungry. We are going to move on to the people who had a personal story of the Savior. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee called Nazareth and Gabe to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the descendants of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming, he said to her, Hail, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at this statement and kept pondering what kind of solution this might be. Luke chapter 1, verse 26 through 29. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom will have no end. Luke chapter, chapter 1, verse 30 through 33. Station 6. I'm Mari, and this is my amazing co-host, Reese. Let's continue. Mary's story starts with her being told that she had been chosen to be the mother of the Savior.
That truly is an amazing story. I love that song, the special meaning behind it. This is where John's story has started as well. John's story started before he was even born. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your petition has been heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will give him the name John, and you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and he will drink no wine or liquor, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit while yet in his mother's womb, and he will turn back many of the sons of Israel to the Lord their God. Luke chapter 1, verse 13 through 16. And it is he who will go as a forerunner before him, and the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children and the disobedient to the attitude of the righteousness, so as to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Luke chapter 1, verse 17. Now at this time Mary arose and went with haste to the hill country, to a city of Judah, and entered the house of Zacharias, and greeted Elizabeth. And it came about that when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and she cried out a loud voice, and said, Blessed among women are you, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how has it happened to me that the mother of my Lord said, so, so Come to me, for behold, the sound of your greeting reached in my ears. The baby leaped in my womb for joy. Luke chapter 1, verse 39 through 44. Right, you are. We are just talking about the stories of the Savior as they, have as they have to do with his birth today. Joseph's story fits in right about here. Joseph was questioning whether he should take Mary as his wife when the angel came to him in a dream and told him it would be okay, the angel told him. And she will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, 
for it is he who shall save his people from their sins. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. And Joseph arose from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord demanded him. He took her as his wife. Matthew chapter 1, verse 24. Joseph's story begins whenever God chose him to raise his one and only son here on earth. story. Can you imagine raising the Son of God as your very own child? The pressure and the pleasure, just like it is raising any wonderfully gifted child. And um, good evening, everyone. Hardy and myself are delighted to have you all join us to celebrate Christmas. Yes, we are now going to continue our story. We are now going to move on to the innkeeper. Oh. 
Now in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census be taken of all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while King Curius was the governor of Sierra, and everyone was on its way to register for the, for the census, each of his own each of his own city. Joseph also went up from Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, to to Judea, to Judea, the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of and family of David, in order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him, and was with child. Who was, who was, while they were there, the days were completed to her, for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloths and laid him in the manger, because there was no room for them in the end. Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. Pat didn't mention an innkeeper. It does say that Mary gave birth to Jesus and laid him in a manger. Do you know what a manger is? Sure, it's like a trough that animals eat out of. Where do we usually find troughs that animals, that animals eat out of? In barns. What's another name for a barn? A stable. Someone has to own the stables, don't they? Yes. That is who I am calling the innkeeper. He is the owner of the place where Mary and Joseph stayed and where Jesus was born. Right. He has a story of the Savior. He didn't know that by telling Mary and Joseph that they could stay in the stable that he was giving housing to the Son of God. What a thought. Yes, and he was able to provide a place to stay for his Savior, and he didn't even know it. In the same region, there are some shepherds staying out in a field and keeping watch over the flock by night. And the angel of the Lord suddenly kept the fo- them in glory and shone around them. And they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news for great joy, which will be for all people. For today in the city of David, there has been a born, there has been born for a Savior, who Christ. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes in a manger. Luke chapter eight, verses eight through twelve.
glorious song. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God on the highest, and on earth peace among men with him he is pleased. Luke chapter 2, verses 13 through 14. When the angel had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, Let's go straight to Bethlehem, then see this thing that has happened, which the Lord made note to us. So they come in a hurry and found their, their way to Mary and Joseph and his baby. He, he laid in a manger when they had seen them made note of the statement which had been told them about this child and all heard wonder at these things which were told them by shepherds but Mary treasured all these things pondering them in her heart the shepherds went back to glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen just as they had been told them Luke chapter 2 verses 15 through 20 now we're sending it over to Weston and Allie where they'll be telling us some exciting new information. Merry Christmas! stories of the Savior, and I have to say, it's been exciting. Allie and myself are excited to continue. There was a man named Simon who also had a story of the Savior. He was told by the Holy Spirit that he would not die until he saw the Savior. And he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to carry out for him the custom of the law, then he took him into his arms and blessed God and said, Now, Lord, you are releasing your bond servant to depart in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light of revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory of your people Israel. Luke chapter 2, verses 27 through 32.
Media, breaking news to report. People all over the world are wondering why we have Christmas. You're gonna have to cut to commercial really quick. People are always in hope inside of what really matters during the Christmas season. We'll be right back, folks. Welcome back, Pittsburgh. Wes and Allie had to go take up some other business, so Emma and myself will be finishing up the show. Take it away, Emma. Is there even going to be Christmas this year? Of course there will be Christmas this year. Everyone is worried about Christmas. We need to give the viewers something to believe in. Wait just a minute. A story has just come to our network about kids sharing Christmas symbols in Christ. We just talked all about our presentation of the Savior and his birth. Now people need something to believe in. Things that they can see and understand what Christmas really means. This is the perfect story. We are coming to you live from the heart of Pittsburgh, Kansas, where local kids have decided to share what average Christmas symbols really mean to them. A Christmas tree. We see it with pretty lights on and pretty decorations on it. But what does it really mean? An evergreen tree has a very appropriate name. It is evergreen, always green. It does not become dormant in the winter like other trees do. The color green represents new life and the needles of the evergreen are pointed up heavenward. It symbolizes our everlasting life of Jesus Christ. We should be as the evergreen tree, always full of life and never becoming dormant in our life with Christ as our arms are lifted up heavenward. The bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven. He gives life to the world. John chapter 6, verse 33. On the pretty tree of all smoky lights of the tree, we need to know more about the meaning behind the beautiful ornaments. Ornaments are used to decorate Christmas trees each and every year. People look for perfect ones to fit on their tree. Our Christmas tree would just seem complete without our ornaments. Ornaments can symbolize the blessings in our lives. Our lives just wouldn't be complete without the beautiful ornaments. Candles bring light to those who need it. Lights and candles are used to give light. When a room is full of darkness, it is dark. But if you light a single match in a dark room, the room is light. There may be more darkness, but the light overpowers it. And we are that light. We can be a single light in the world of darkness. We must share our light with the world so that the light increases. You are the, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do the people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but put it on a stand so that the light shines through all the house. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 through 15. A star has its own beauty and lights up the night sky. He star was a heavenly sign of prophecy, fulfilled ages ago the shining hope for all of mankind. The star led the wise men to find the baby Jesus. These wise men traveled many miles following the star in the sky. The star was their guiding light of sorts, and the, the wise men's travel agent was God, leading them to the greatest destination known to man, the Savior. We now have his word as our guiding light to, be, to lead us to be with him in heaven. Are you going to follow him? When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Matthew chapter 2, verses 9 through 10. These days, the world has forgotten the reason for Christmas. Most people seem to think that getting presents is the most important part about Christmas. Other people seem to think that presents have nothing to do with Christmas. Well, they're both wrong. The wise men brought gifts to Jesus as a child. They brought him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They offered him gold as a king, paying him tribute. Frankincense is God, for they honored him with the smoke of incense, and myrrh, as a man should die. Myrrh was used in embalming dead bodies. These men, these wise men, saw the child and knew that he was a king, and that he was God, and that he would die for the sins of the world. How can anyone with the knowledge that we have today not believe? The wise men went to the house. There they saw the child with his mother Mary. They bowed down and worshipped him. They opened their treasures, and they gave him gold, incense, and myrrh. Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. to bring angels their wings, the bell rings out to guide the lost sheep back to the fold, signifying that all are precious in the eyes of the Lord. Jesus is our shepherd and he laid down his life for us so that we may spend eternity with him in heaven. He is calling us to follow him through his word. Are you going to listen? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, 
Does he not leave in the 99 on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? Matthew chapter 18, verse 12, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. John chapter 10, verse 11. A candy cane can be a sweet treat with many different kinds of flavors. It also symbolizes many things. If you turn it upright, it looks like a shepherd's crook. If you turn it upside down, it looks like a J. Jesus starts with J. The colors also have meaning. The red symbolizes the blood that Jesus shed for us on the cross. The white, the purity. The white is the purity of Jesus. There are candy canes with three small red stripes running around it. These symbolize the Trinity, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Who knew that this simple treat could be so pr profoundly symbolic of our Lord Jesus Christ and his simple birth? And he shall bear a son, and he shall call his name Jesus, for it is he who shall save his people from their sins. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. We see holly as a decoration during the Christmas season, but do we really understand what holly stands for? The leaves represent the crown of thorns that were placed upon Jesus' head as he was being crucified. The berries symbolize the blood that he shed for us. He endured criticism, excru excruciating pain, and embarrassment, all for you and I. The next time you see a decoration with holly on it, remember, remember that what was done for you so that he could spend eternity with you. I know that I will. And twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, Queen of the King of the Jews. Matthew chapter 27, verse 29. Christmas cookies brings joy over the holiday season. Making cookies is a favorite pastime for most families during the Christmas season. Cookie cutters are used to turn ordinary dough into edible masterpieces. God doesn't, doesn't use cookie cutters when he creates each one of us. He makes each one of us so special and unique that he would have to break the mold after just one use. He is the potter and we are his clay. He wants to mold us into his masterpieces. We only need to be moldable and willing to follow his lead. Behold, like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. O house of Israel, Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 6. Many people spend hours wrapping all their presents during Christmas time. They use ribbon, garlands, and bows to make sure that their presents are as beautiful as possible. What they don't realize is that the items they use to complete the outside of the gift have more meaning than the actual gift inside. The ribbon ties our present, the bow ties our present with a beautiful ribbon just as Jesus ties us as Christians together in his love. We may not all be in the same family, but we are all in the family of God. Jesus is the ribbon that binds us together in, and above all these put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Colossians chapter 3 verse 14. You heard it first love, live from our main station. Back to you in the studio, Will. Thanks, Emma. I think the viewers can rest each night knowing the true meaning of Christmas. So that concludes today's presentation. Of course you all know this is the, e the beginning of this evening's presentation. This showing the beginning of the story. This showing the beginning of the stories of the Savior and the symbols of Christmas. There are so many people who have a story of the Savior. What's, What's your, your story? story? Merry Christmas. We hope you had a wonderful and blessed new year full of faith and the love of the Lord.